Southampton Solent University. This is the outline of the house that we prepared in the first tutorial and in this one we're going to put some windows in. But first let's just have a quick look at what we've got. I'm going to go up to my layers properties and switch off the construction setup layer so that you can see exactly what we have in the way of walls. If I click out of there you can see we've got window openings, that's a window and door, windows, doors, etc etc. I'm going to turn my construction setup back on because I think most of those lines will be useful, there we are, and start to have a look at putting in a window. So if I move up and focus in on this front room window, but first we'll just have a little check of, of some ways of selecting lines. What we did in the first tutorial was just click on a line to select it, and I can cl click on as many lines as I like, select, 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 and it'll keep adding more lines into that range. If I escape that though, I could also draw a window around them and AutoCAD does that automatically. If I start on the left hand side and click, you can see that I'm drawing a blue window with a solid edge and the two lines that I want to select are the ones either side of my window opening. If I click now, you'll see that it's selected everything that was actually completely enclosed within that window. That's one of the ways we can choose things. The other way, if I escape again, is with a crossing window. And with a crossing window, it doesn't just select the elements that are completely enclosed within the window, it'll select everything the window crosses. That's starting at the right and moving towards the left instead of starting at the left and moving to the boards the right and you can tell it's a crossing window because it's green with a dotted edge so if I click now it's selected everything that the edge of that window crossed well obviously if I deleted this lot I'd be losing far too much of my drawing I'll show you if you go wrong there's a very very simple solution if you look up at the top of your screen you've got an undo button I'll click on that and that's undone that lot now I'm going to delete them again because I want to show you another way you can get them back as well as the undo button at the top you can use an undo command in the command line and all I need to do is type U and you can see the going back arrow next to it and enter and there they are. So the two lines I want to get rid of are the two either side of the window but first we need to create the layer to put the window in. So going back up to layer properties I need a new layer. It's a design layer and it's windows. I'm going to make the colour yellow it's nice and visible but it looks thinner on the screen than white and I want a thinner line because windows are much lighter elements in construction so I'm going to go for 0.25 millimeters. Just check over here that it's going to print and we haven't got the little no entry sign so that's fine and while I'm at it I'm also going to create myself a doors layer. Leave all the other settings the same, make windows current and close that. So the first part of the window that I'm going to draw is the window frame and to do that I need a rectangle and I need a rectangle of a specific size so I'll go up to the draw panel to the rectangle command and click on that and I'm just going to draw my window frame near to where I want the window so if I do a click to start it you can see the rectangle starting it's following polar I want it exactly 50 millimeters by 75 millimeters but if I were to put 50 comma 75 and then do enter that's done something really weird what it's done is put the other corner of the rectangle 50, 75 relative to the origin of the drawing down here. That isn't what we want at all. So if we undo that, undo the rectangle, start again. What I want is a rectangle going 50 that way and 75 that way. To do that, I need to first type at, and then I can put in my dimension. 50, 75, enter, and there it is. Not very big, but then relative to the size of a whole house, a window frame is not a very big element. Now I'm going to put that in position and I'm going to use the move command to do that. So I can do it in one of two ways. If I click on it to highlight it, all I can see is the blue dots, zoom in closer, go up to move in the modify panel, click on that, and then the command line's asking for a base point. If I click on the middle of the window as a base point, that tells me where on the element that I'm moving I'm wanting things to click to and I want to put that in the middle of the window opening so if I put it in the middle of the wall there clicking on midpoint again that puts that in place next I'm going to copy that and this is where we come to another one of AutoCAD's really useful commands when I did move I clicked on the element and then I went to move the other way you can do that is to go to the command and then AutoCAD asks you to select the objects you want to move or copy or whatever 
if I click on that, then I need to confirm to AutoCAD that I've finished choosing bits, so I need to type Enter. My base point, again, I'll use the midpoint. If you look, I'm picking the other side, because that's the bit that needs to snap to the other side of the opening. So you do just need to think as you're going along about snapping to the other side of the opening. The reason AutoCAD's copy command works so much better than using Ctrl-C and Ctrl-V as standard Windows copying is that you can select your um, base point and you can also carry on copying as many of the objects as you want to all over the drawing. Now obviously I don't want a garden full of window frames, so I'll escape that and delete that lot and carry on drawing my window. When you're drawing something like a window in plan, what you're actually drawing is a slice through the frame at either side and then you'll be able to see the, the part of the frame that runs across the bottom of that window. So I'm going to draw a rectangle to show that and it just needs to run right round the outside of this window. So I'll click in one corner, click in the other corner and that's done. I'm going to use the line command to draw a line across the middle which represents the glass and now I need to draw my, my window sills. If you look at a window you'll see that you have a sill projecting inwards within the house and you also have a sill projecting outwards which is to throw the water away from the wall. So we're going to do it with a rectangle again and we'll start by just drawing a rectangle the depth of the wall. That doesn't look actually very window-like and it won't come out very window-like in a finished result. If I click on that rectangle, you'll see I've got my corner grabs, which I can grab and pull, and I can pull by a specified amount. So if I get my line running out like that, I can tell it I want to go 20 in that direction. Confirm that and do the same with this one. 20, enter. The alternative is to use this little flat grab handle in the middle. As you float over it, you've got some alternatives. All I want to do is a stretch. If I grab hold of that and pull it, you can see the window's pulling out. Now all I need to do is tell AutoCAD how far I want to pull it, and that's going to be my 20 millimeters, and that's done. Escape to show that. So now we've got one window in one window opening, but I need a whole lot more windows, and they're all different sizes. So I'm going to copy this, and on this occasion I don't need a specific point, so I'll just click anywhere, click next to the window opening. As you can see, this one's far too big, and I'll just put one up here. I'm going to move this into position using the middle snap there, but it's way overhanging where I need, and this is where another command comes in useful. We've got two options. If I carefully select the whole of my window, I could use scale and I could set a base point. But it looks like it wants to be about a third of the size, so if I type 0.3 as my scale factor, enter, you'll see it's just made the whole thing completely ridiculously small. So we'll undo that, you enter. If we use stretch, that gives us a whole different ballpark. So if I click on the stretch command, and now it's asking us to select objects, but above that it says select objects to stretch by crossing window or crossing polygon. This is where we need to, to choose things using the appropriate select tool. So if we click to the right of the element we want to stretch, just cut across it, you can see I've got a crossing window, that's going to select everything we're crossing click there. It looks as though it's just picked up everything, including my construction lines and everything. I've still got the little select tool cursor, and AutoCAD is still asking me to select objects. I need to do an enter to confirm that I've finished selecting objects. I could remove objects if I picked something that I didn't want. So if I type R for remove, then I could take out that one and that one. I don't actually need to on this occasion, but I can do. What we'll find is that everything that was completely enclosed in the crossing window will stay exactly as it is, and the lines that were cut through by the crossing window will be the ones that are stretchy. So now we've finished removing objects, there's nothing else we want to select, so we need to do an enter to confirm that. And now, as usual, it's asking for a base point. My base point I can take really as anywhere along this edge, but if I use that corner, and then if I start pulling this around a bit, you can see which bits are stretching and which bits aren't. All I want to do is a straight stretch. I could change the shape of it completely if I wanted to. 
but I just need a straight stretch going in this direction so that ends up there. Now I need to copy that over to the window opening on the other side and these were both the same size so that's simple. I'll put one just there as well and enter to confirm that. You can see how much easier that was than Control c and Control v I'm sure. I'm going to make another copy of this one over to the other side of this window. Now let's measure the size of this area in the middle because I want it to be about the same size as the combined size of these two windows and it actually looks quite a bit bigger. If I want to find the size of something I can click on measure up here and I can click on the two sides like that, 1430. And I know these windows are about 635, so I want these two to be a little bit bigger. Escape from my measure command. If I hit enter again, I can measure something else. So I'll escape from that. I'm going to delete that. Stretch this one 100 mil. So I'm going to start anywhere with my stretch. You can see the window following it but I want it to go 100 millimetres in this direction. So I'll just type 100 and enter. And now I'm going to copy that over to the other side. And that just leaves me a space for my doorway, which we'll do in the next tutorial. Last part of this is going to be turning this window round to make it fit in this opening. So first I need to choose it, then I need to rotate it. And if I choose the rotate command up here, it says it rotates objects around a base point. So I click on that. It doesn't really matter where the base point is. Click anywhere. And you can see how it's snapping to my polar settings. Or I can make it any angle I want to, but it's following the cursor. just want it going up and down, so we'll stop there. Now we'll move it into position. And it needs to be in position in the middle of that wall. And now we'll stretch it taking care not to cross anything that we don't want to stretch. So we'll go there, confirm that. Stretch from there, Ooh, back there. OK. And we just need another one of those. So we'll copy that up to the other side. And we need a window there too. Stretch it to make it bigger. we zoom out, zoom, enter, extents, enter. We've got our house with our little windows in. I'll turn off the construction setup again. So this is what our end result would look like. Thanks for joining me for this one. We'll be looking at the doors next time.